Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts. Happy holidays, everyone. In today's video, I will be showing you how to create these adorable and personalized hot pads. I use Dollar Tree hot pads and some HTV. Such an easy craft, so let's get started. Hey guys, so I'm starting in Design Space and I already uploaded my images I'm going to be using. I purchased these images from Etsy, so if you're interested in them, I will leave the link below. One thing though I will tell you about this is um, it comes already attached and welded, so you really can't do anything else with this unless you are going to go into the contour button and kind of get rid of something that you want to make a different color. Um, but I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to take all mine and change them to uh, white. They are going on red pot holders, so I'm going to change all this to white. But if you did want to change the colors, I'm just going to warn you ahead of time that it's going to be uh, take you a little bit to um, contour any of this stuff. So that would be in another video if you're interested in that. So the only thing I'm going to do for these is actually change the size. My pot holders are about 5 by 5, 5 5 by 5 5, so I'm going to go with 4. So the only thing I'm going to do with this is change the size and change the colors. All right, so to do that, uh, all you have to do is select the first one you're going to be working with. Go up here. Do not unlock it. I do not want to have it 4 by 4, and I'm going to show you why in a second. So I'm just going to change this first one to 4, and then it's automatically going to change it to resize it to a better size. So if I do four by four, it's gonna look a little skewed. So um, I normally don't unlock it up here anymore to change it to be a certain width and height. I always let Design Space figure it out for me so it's not gonna look skewed. So this one is finished. I'm gonna grab the next one and do the same thing. I'm not gonna unlock it. All I'm gonna do is push four and then enter, and then it will automatically uh, change the height for me. So I'm just going to do that with this next couple of them. I'll show you one more. All I'm going to do is four and then enter and then it's going to change it for me. I always just want to make sure up here that it's not going to go any higher than four for the height. I do not want it to be any higher or um, longer, higher or wider than four by four. So again, it's going to select this and then change it to be four. So I'm going to do these finished last ones really quick just to kind of uh, be finished with them. So just I'll fast forward this part. All right, so I'm finished with these. So the last thing I want to do is just change the color. Like I said, it will just change the whole color itself. It won't let you go in and change. Like if you want to do the hat red, um, you can't do that with this particular file unless, I, like I said, you go in the contour button. All right, so the last thing I want to do on here is actually select everything and then change the color to white. Mine are just going to be a regular white. So I'm just going to select white here. You can change it to be any color you want. Like if you wanted this one to be, let's say, um, green, you can change it to be green. You know, it's whatever color you want, but it will change the whole image itself. So if you want to go up here and again, change it to a different green, you can do that as well. But I want mine to cut out all white. So as you see, I have two green and a white. So if you go back up here and you're like, oh, what is this question mark for? It's just telling you that there's more than one color selected. So everything else is going to change to whatever color you change it to. So all these are finished. They are four by, you know, three a little bit 3.75 3.4 but it's going to fit perfectly on my file you can do it a little bigger if you want like four and a half or four and a quarter you know something like that um but i just i like the size that these come out to so i'm just going to click make it i'm just going to show you which setting i like to use uh using htv so here it is i have so many files on here that it's uh only on a 12 by 12. i actually have a roll of htv so i'm going to change my material size over here to be 12 by 24. so that's going to fit every single one of these on my roll that i'm going to be using another thing i do is just move these just a little bit that i can get my scissors in between each one easily and uh, not waste any HTV here. So it's just like that. So all of these are on one um, piece of HTV. Another thing, very important, you want to change your button here that says mirror on it. You want to have all of your images mirrored when you're using HTV heat transfer vinyl. So I'm going to click continue and now I'm going to show you what setting I use to cut this out in. So for me, normally if I'm using regular vinyl, I use the stencil vinyl, but when I'm using the HTV, I go over here to this heat transfer non Cricut. When I don't use Cricut brand, I use this one, the heat transfer non Cricut. So I'm going to click on that one and you always want to make sure that you have 
have a um, very sharp blade in your Cricut. Um, I actually did just change my blade, but sometimes I like to go to this pressure and just click more. That just seems to make a cutout a little bit better for me. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Uh, if yours is not cutting out, always check your blade, and then you can always just do more pressure like I did here. Um, but just make sure that your HTV is on, or actually your mat is, your mirror is on, and make sure that when you put your HTV on your uh, green mat, you wanna make sure that the iron side uh, material the plastic material of it or the transfer is on the bottom so it's always shiny side down so i'm going to go ahead and cut this out i'm going to weed it out and then i'll show you the next step all right guys so i'm at my heat press now i have it all set up it is at 280 degrees for 24 seconds um, if you're going to use an iron, please look up to see how you use an iron. I switched from my iron to an easy press to this. I could not stand the easy press. I know some of you are going to say, why not? Why not? But I really did not like the easy press. This is an ultimate easy press. You set it. You don't have to push on it. And it just works for you. And it counts on the time. And you're not constantly sitting there and trying to push enough pressure on it. So I highly suggest a heat press like this. Yes, they are a little bit more expensive. Um, not too much more expensive than the easy presses are, so I would definitely look into that. So here's one of my files that I'm going to be putting on here. So the first thing you want to do is actually give this a quick press, um, just to get it warm and to get any wrinkles out that you may have in there. So I'm just going to give it a good, you know, 10 second press or so to get it nice and warm and then get some of the wrinkles out. Then I'm just going to put my file on it. And you just want to find, whoops, sorry guys, you want to find the center part of your oven mitt. And I'm just using plain old Dollar Tree oven mitts. I bought these a while ago and then they have the little spot in the inside here that you could put something in. Um, but these are the ones that I use. So I put the image on it. I'm just making sure it's nice and center. And then I'm just going to put my protective covering over it. And I could do more than one right now, but I'm just going to do one for now to show you guys. But I have it set for 280 for 20 seconds. So I'm going to fast forward this so you don't have to sit through this. Alright, so now it's done. You just lift up take your covering off and then carefully peel back the plastic transfer part and that is finished it is so easy to do here you go it's all done ready to go um, one other thing is sometimes if you cannot get the wrinkles out of these is to just take a piece of cardboard and your mitt and just stick a piece of cardboard inside here and then this will help get out some of the wrinkles on the pre-press. So I'm just going to put that down for just a couple seconds. Get it nice and warm again and I'm um, trying to get some of those wrinkles out. I have a, quite a few more of these files that I had cut out. That should be good. And you can also leave this in here if you wanted. It's not going to do anything. It's just nice. It's just hot. So here's another one. Life is what you bake it. I think that's really cute. Again, just find the center. And then take your Teflon paper or whatever you have on hand, and then just press it. A little bit more difficult now that I have the cardboard on it, but again, heat press does it all for you. I don't have to hold anything. I can do the pressure on it. The time's going for me. This is so much easier to use than an easy press. If you have an easy press and you're looking for something else, I will leave the link to this below. I absolutely love this guy. Had him a couple years already and he works wonderfully. Okay, so it's done. Just wanna pull up. And then carefully peel back. And your cardboard is going to be hot when you pull it out, so just be careful. There's a tag. So there, that one is finished as well. So that was really easy to do. You can also use, um, you know, any kind of color HTV you want, heat transfer vinyl. I've done a few of uh, glitter ones, and that turned out really awesome. I've seen black, uh, seen people use black oven mitts with white or even red, and that looked really pretty. I've had my eye on these oven mitts for quite a while. I can't find them anymore. So maybe if you can't find them, just look on uh, DollarTree.com and see if you can get them. Unfortunately, you do have to buy a bundle of like 25, I think. Um, but I plan on selling these. I'm going to put some cookie mix in it and then also a whisk in it. So I think I'm going to sell it for $10 altogether. Or if I'm just going to leave it the way it is, I will sell it for $5. So I'd make $4 on each one. So I'm going to finish these up and then I'll show you what they look like after they're all finished. I really love how these turned out and they will make great Christmas gifts and they will be really good sellers for me as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. Happy holidays everyone!